Welcome to the Maine Solar House. My name is Bill Lord. Since you couldn't get here in person, I figured this was the next best way to give you a tour. My wife and I have lived here for the last 10 years. And in each of those years, this house has contributed to its power and heating needs. In fact, today, it's making hot water on the left-hand side of the roof. We'll use that for domestic hot water needs, as well as heating later tonight. The right-hand side of the roof is making electricity. It's making more electricity than the house needs right now. The extra goes onto the grid where we get a credit. But more about the specifics later. Over the years, this house has become an icon for solar living. Not just its uh, pleasing aesthetic design, but also its functionality. We've been the subject of many newspaper and magazine articles. We've been referred to as solar farmers, harvesting the sun's energy, solar groundhogs, getting up in the morning and looking to the sky to see whether or not the sun was shining. In fact, on sunny days, we are much happier. We generate more hot water and more electricity. We've also been visited by television programs from Home and Garden, the History Channel, Connecticut Public Television, and Voice of America. We'll get to the voice a little bit later. But first, Home and Garden Television. We were the lead on their program, Dream Builders. It gives us light, it gives us warmth, it gives us life. But now it gives us a new way to build our homes. Hi, I'm Scott Morgan. Welcome to Dream Builders. Solar panels, solar thermal, passive solar, we hear these terms bandied around a lot these days. But do we really understand what they mean and how they can change the way we build and design our homes? Well, today we'll learn some solar solutions. Later in the show, Steve Greenberg takes us to home building school and we'll check out some high-end construction in the Hamptons. But we begin here in the Northeast, where folks are bringing home the power of the sun. Bill and Debbie Lord decided to retire to the Maine coast and build their dream home. With a beautiful view of the Atlantic Ocean and a house full of creature comforts, it may come as a surprise that the Lords meet all their energy needs using solar power. There are a lot of myths about the solar house. Uh, number one, it has to be ugly. Number two, you have to have equipment hanging off the roof all over the place, uh, sort of a Rube Goldberg affair. Number three, it's complicated. Number four, it doesn't work. Uh, none of those are, are true here. At first glance, the Lord's house looks like your typical New England home, until you take a closer look at the roof. It's sort of a schizophrenic roof. Uh, half of it wants to generate electricity, and the other half wants to, uh, to make hot water. The 20 solar thermal modules not only provide for all the Lord's domestic hot water needs, but also circulate water within the house for heating. The 16 300 watt photovoltaic panels harness the energy of the sun for their power needs. So Bill, this is one of your toys? This is one of my toys. This is the uh, power generation station. Okay. The uh, electricity from the roof comes down as direct current and we have to pass it through the inverter to make it AC. To make it AC, it goes through my meter. I measure how much I generate each year. Even in the overcast New England climate, the Lords produce excess electricity every month. That excess is zapped back to the local power company. And we get a credit in kilowatt hours of extra power given to the utility. Architect Stephen Strong of Solar Design Associates was the visionary behind the Lord House. He says that building solar requires a comprehensive approach. To achieve a truly environmentally responsive building, you need to do more than just simply put a solar collector system on it. It also has the passive solar geometry that welcomes the sun in during the winter while excluding it during the summer to reduce unwanted cooling loads. You're also, of course, specifying the most energy efficient appliances and end use loads that you can find, always trying to balance the demand side of the equation by reducing requirements. Then you add the active solar systems for heating and hot water and the solar electric. The solar electric components are the photovoltaics, or solar panels, we're all familiar with. It's not necessary to build a brand new house to take advantage of the latest solar technologies. 
Stephen Strong transformed the post-World War II homes in the little town of Gardner, Massachusetts into a solar community. And even if you're not ready for photovoltaics on your roof, there are other things you can do to save energy. Existing houses take a little bit more work, but there are many things that homeowners can do to improve the energy profile of their house. Obviously, increasing levels of insulation, adding storm windows, wrapping and insulating their water heater and pipes and ductwork. There's no doubt that building a solar showcase house, like the Lord's, requires more money up front, approximately 15% more. But the savings appear in your monthly bills. I did a cost comparison last winter where we had an extremely cold January. My neighbors spent close to $600 for that month to heat the house and to power the house. My costs were $42. Uh, that's payback. But Bill Lord also points out that monetary payback isn't everything. You end up way ahead of the game because you are now in harmony with the environment as opposed to uh, fighting it. Bill Lord uses his website as a way to spread the word about solar living. He hopes that by offering up his house as an example to others, the word will spread that solar technology is not for folks living on the fringe or for eccentric millionaires. He hopes to show people that building solar means building smarter. You do not live a lifestyle any different than a regular house without solar power. I think the word needs to go out that it's real. It's a long-term investment for our own individual security and comfort and also for the nation. The History Channel has a series called Modern Marvels. One of the programs dealt with a generation of power in America. The last five minutes of the program focused on the main solar house, how we were the answer to today's problems and tomorrow's challenges. Perhaps the power plant of the future looks something like this, a house on the main coast that generates more energy than it consumes. This house incorporates both solar thermal for space heating and hot water, and solar electricity for electrical production. The panels are integrated to form the finished weathering skin of the south roof, and the house pretty much exists in terms of its heating, hot water, and electrical energy requirements from the harvested energy that falls on the roof. The house does more than just exist. It contributes to the energy needs of its community. And homeowner William Lord is quite proud of this fact. We make most of our own hot water and all of our electricity. In fact, we generate uh, more electricity um, than we actually use. So the process of fitting into the environment is, is seamless in our case and is not disruptive. The direct conversion of solar energy into electricity with photovoltaics is the most environmentally benign method of making electricity. And so that coupled with other conversion measures such as wind energy conversion, hydropower, can combine to gradually displace the conventional systems to build a resilient energy economy based on renewables. It's not a question of if, but when. And from my perspective, time is short. We should be investing the relatively plentiful and relatively inexpensive reserves of conventional energy to build this technology bridge to the future because these are finite resources and they are not going to be here indefinitely. Connecticut Public Television did a program on solar power and we were the primary focus. I know that a lucky old son Nothing to do to rule around Heaven. free energy harvested from the sun to provide heat, hot water, and electricity. For Deborah and Bill Lord of Cape Porpoise, Maine, their dream retirement home wouldn't be built any other way. We figure that building a solar house is at least a 15% uh, increase in cost. You get that back uh, almost instantly in, in my book by being in a much more comfortable, warmer, and uh, benign environment. 
The House is always working for us. It's always doing something on our behalf. Whether we're here or not, it's generating hot water stored here in these tanks. It's making electricity, which if not being used locally, gets exported to the grid. Not only does this home enjoy passive solar heat coming from the south-facing windows, the entire south roof was designed to harness solar energy. One question that is frequently asked is, what's the payback? But I don't think those numbers are relevant. To me, the payback is instantaneous, a warm and comfortable home, uh, treading lightly on the environment. You don't ask that question of an asphalt roof. There is no payback. You're going to have to put on a new roof at some point. It deteriorates. You don't ask that question of the fancy kitchen cabinets or the marble uh, in your bathroom. According to a KPMG report commissioned by Greenpeace, building just one large-scale solar panel factory would level the playing field and introduce solar energy into the mainstream. I started my professional career working for the oil companies. My first big break, if you will, was a chance to work on the Alaskan Pipeline Project. And there I was doing systems engineering work precisely during the first world oil embargo. And that was a wake-up call to me. It made it very clear that going to the end of the earth to extract the last drop of fossil fuel was not at all the easiest and best way to deliver comfort and convenience to the consumer. The majority of folks still think that solar is stuck in the backwater of the 70s, is not technologically proven or reliable, and doesn't work. We're here in Maine at a house which has a modest amount of solar resources available and a very challenging winter climate. If we can make solar work in Maine, we can make it work anywhere in the U.S. Voice of America came. They did a feature on the house. It was for their Chinese service. It was in Mandarin, but I think you'll get the gist. Look for our monthly electrical bill. Uh, my name is Xiang Liu uh, with Voice of America. Uh, I'm a reporter. This program is going to be, you know, it's for our show called Cultural Odyssey, and it's going to broadcast to China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And how many viewers do you think it'll have? Uh, it's in millions. Our program will be translated into 53 different languages uh, broadcast worldwide. Uh, I'm William Lord, L-O-R-D. William Lord, L-O-R-D. I'm 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 William Lord, L-O-R-D. 而这并不是电费, On the first Saturday in October, there is a national tour of solar homes. Our home is open at that time. Whether they come on a rainy day, and they do come on a rainy day, or a sunny day, they walk away very impressed with what solar power can do. It looks like a conventional house. I'm very impressed with the fact that the systems are controlled a very controlled environment. They aren't spread all over the downstairs and you don't really see a lot of evidence of the alternate energy sources until you have to go down there and actually deal with them. I, it's very impressive, very clean installation, very efficient. You've taken an initiative and showed people what's, what's available and obviously by the turnout you get every year in your open house and you know we're just amazed. Uh, I, I, this is nothing what I thought it would look like and the downstairs is just awesome. I think it is absolutely amazing. We are so impressed with it. We're actually really impressed with the fact that the roof is actually your solar panels. So we were we the we see them as raised off roofs like where we are, but uh, we're quite impressed that it is actually part of the roof structures. It's just um, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to do to do this house for us. <laughs> the house uh, demonstrates the uh, the ability. Uh, not to give up the creature comforts and still be um, environmentally friendly. 
I mean, our society won't, I don't, I don't believe our society will give up the creature comforts and they're going to burn oil until, uh, and, and, until they don't have to. And this demonstrates that you don't have to. I'm very impressed. This is the ultimate, to be able to be self-sufficient and not tied to the oil industry and the price of oil. I, I love the idea that we can get off of the grid to some extent and that we have some independence. To me, it is a, a, an independence thing, that the solar energy is there, we should use it. And it seems immoral to continue to pollute. The solar house does some of its best work in the wintertime. It may be cold outside, but inside it really is warm. And in fact, the sun not only comes from the sky, but it bounces off the snow and the ice. The solar house really shines in the wintertime. It's a cold January day. Very cold, in fact. Nearly minus 15 degrees outside. Inside, the house wakes up to a comfortable temperature. Without opening the windows, the passive solar gain alone would raise the indoor temperature to around 80 degrees. The roof is clear of snow and ice, thanks to the 45 degree angle and the glass coated panels. In the basement, the two 500 gallon storage tanks are ready to receive sun heated water. When the temperature on the roof is 10 degrees warmer than the water in the tanks, the controls switch the pumps on and the water circulates up to the roof and back into the tanks, absorbing heat from the sun. Throughout the day, heat is transferred to the water, and when there is little difference in temperature between the roof and the tanks, the system shuts off and the water drains down. Mother Nature's delivery of new, free energy is finished for the day. The house will be well heated during the night.